good morning everybody. Um, my name is John Musiku um, from a company called uh, Namibia Special Risk Insurance Association. And I'm just going to take you on a very short journey of um, basically who we are, what we do, and what our reason for existence is. Um, but most importantly, I'm going to focus on a product that we have um, recently designed, which is called a weather index-based livestock insurance scheme or solution. Uh, in terms of the outline for my presentation, like I said, I will tell you a little bit more about who we are, what we do, um, what triggers the development of NICE. NICE stands for Namibia Agricultural Insurance Scheme. And I'll also take you through what WIBLIS, WIBLIS stands for Weather Index Based Livestock Insurance, the approaches that NASRIA follows. Um, then I'll briefly talk about issues of affordability of the product as well as the premium subsidies and also just have a rundown on the value chain uh, that Nasria has created in coming up with uh, this product line before I conclude. Yes, um, Nasria is probably a, an insurance company that is uh, not so well known in the market, uh, but we have been active in the market since uh, 1988. And uh, Nasria was created on the backdrop of um, a situation that developed before independence where when conventional insurance companies decided not to insure um, government assets as a result of the political uprising at the time. Um, so the government assets were then left exposed and as a result um, the government at that time then created um, its own insurance, short-term insurance company called um, Nasri. Uh, Nasia since 1988 has basically been operating as a non-profit non organization um, owned by insurance company and that's why it's called an association so it used to be an association or like an association of insurance companies in Namibia but in 2017 there was a, a convention from an association into a public company with 100% um, of those shares owned by the government and that makes us now uh, basically a parastatal uh, under the Ministry of, um, of Finance. Um, and essentially what we specialize in is the provision of short-term insurance products and services specifically for special risks and we are gaining momentum in terms of participating in the mainstream economy. What exactly do we do? What we do essentially is that we bridge the gap between the market and conventional insurance companies. If you look at your insurance contract, contracts, um, sometimes you might find some perils that are actually excluded from your convention of short-term insurance company. And those perils that, um, that could be excluded from your short-term insurance contract might be some of those that we specialize and we provide you with cover. So we specialize in special risks, essentially. And um, just to give you a list of some of the product offering that we have, um, our main um, product is called a PVT, which is Political Violence and Terrorism Insurance. We also got another insurance product which is called a CGS, that stands for Credit Guarantee Scheme. This is a product um, which offers you know, collateral. Um, we have basically entered into some agreements with financial institutions, especially banks, but also other microfinance um, institutions. And when you approach your banker and you're looking for a loan and you fall in that category of SME or if you're a youth or a woman, you could um, enjoy you know, um, that provision of um, insurance. 
whereby if you are requ required to put up a, a collateral, uh, NASIA will then underwrite up to 60% of that um, uh, collateral and then you will only be required to put up uh, 40%. So this is a very good product, um, especially for those categories um, uh, that I have just highlighted. The other product also that we offer, or that we'll be offering very soon, is what you call human wildlife conflict insurance. This is an insurance um, uh, product that is aimed at mitigating you know, uh, the conflict between uh, wildlife and, uh, and, and, and human beings. Um, um, this is a, an arrangement between Nasria and the Ministry of Environment, um, Forestry and Tourism, whereby, for instance, if somebody goes to Kavango River and he or she is taken by a crocodile, Nasria will then come in and provide, you know, uh, payout uh, uh, to the to the family. Similarly, uh, if you are in Zambezi, for instance, and uh, your Maysfield is trampled by elephants. Then we we'll work out, uh, you know, what is what what has been damaged, what crop damage has been done, and what is the hectare that has been affected, and the compensation will then be uh, paid out. But most importantly, and I think the focus for my presentation uh, this afternoon, we have what is called the Namibia Agriculture Insurance Scheme. This is an insurance uh, product that is aimed really at um, insuring both um, livestock as well as uh, crop farmers in Namibia um, to provide some form of uh, compensation in the event of uh, drought and, um, and floods. Um, let's unpack a little bit what this Namibia Agricultural Insurance Scheme is all about. Um, I think we will all agree that uh, drought and floods in Namibia are um, a big concern, uh, particularly for government. Year in, year out, you know, there is always um, a challenge. Um, about three years ago, uh, the government, through the Minister of Finance, um, approached NAMFISA uh, and requested NAMFISA coordinate um, you know, a process amongst insurance companies so that uh, a drought insurance uh, product can actually be um, um, designed. So that is really what led to the establishment of uh, the Namibia Agricultural Insurance um, um, Scheme. And um, this scheme is aimed at mitigating risks faced by both commercial as well as um, communal farmers. The approach that Nasria has taken is really to say that, look, we want to champion climate change risks by providing solutions to mitigate um, climate change risks. We also aim to become you know, the government's uh, number one climate change risk partners by partnering with them in providing um, special risk insurance. And um, the risk that we are talking about here uh, this afternoon will basically be drought as well as um, floods. And we have designed and calibrated a product called the Weather Index Based Livestock Insurance, uh, which falls under the Namibia Agricultural Insurance um, uh, Scheme. We are going to pilot this um, uh, product, um, but focusing mainly on the cattle. And what we have done is to design a product whereby we have made a determination, an actual determination of what the sum insured is that needs to be um, paid out. Um, and specifically for this, we have made a determination that the sum insured will be around 3,625. And how we came up with that number is that we made a determination in terms of how much does it cost for a farmer to maintain a cattle during the seven to eight months of drought um, in Namibia. And I will speak more to that number, the 3,625. So just keep it at the back of the mind as we develop. Um, this product, unlike the current um, drought um, you know, intervention that are offered by the government, uh, which are more reactive and not, and not necessarily proactive, so Whitley will actually be a very proactive and preventative solution 
that will be paying farmers in advance to try and avert the negative impact of the, of the drought. So in other words, before drought strike, we would have made a payment to the farmers so that they are able to sustain their, their cattle until the rainfall season starts. Let's go a little bit deeper in terms of what this Wibli is all about. So, um, Wibli is what you call a parametric insurance product and it's based on rainfall methodology. So, we have collected uh, rainfall data, made a determination in terms of uh, what is the average rainfall in each and every region that we are going to pilot and we are using you know, satellite um, data. Um, we have got um, an MOU with the Namibia Meteorological Services, and they are providing us, you know, data rainfall. They are providing us with rainfall data on a month to month, from you know, first of uh, October, which is the beginning of the rain season, until the 31st of April, which is the end of the of the rain season. We are going to pilot this. Um, project starting from the 1st of June, so by the 1st of June 2024, we'll start um, you know, onboarding farmers. Farmers can then you know, um, take out uh, policies and they will be insured for a 12-month uh, uh, period. Um, the pilot project will be conducted in five, five of the political, um, of the 14 political region, and our focus will mainly be on hard up Omaheke, Oshodanjupa, Wahangwena and Umsati region. Once we have gained good experience in terms of this product, we are then going to roll out uh, to the rest of the um, remaining uh, political regions. Now, let me just go deep in terms of how this product is really going to work. So, what we have done in terms of the regions where we are going to pilot, we have made a determination in each and every region, what is the average rainfall in each and every region. Let me just start with an example of um, Hardap. So the average rainfall in Hardap is between 75 millimeter and 241 millimeter per annum. So in the event Hardap receives anything between 75 and 241, that year is regarded as normal rainfall. The 17, that number, the drought exit. In the event that hardtap receives 17 millimeter, it means then that hardtap has received an extreme, is in an extreme drought. In the event hardtap has received 508 millimeter, in a particular year. That means hardtop is most likely to be flooded, the grazing areas will be submerged, and there is uh, an emergency. So how we went about this? We collected rainfall and droughts data for the past 38 years, from 1984 to 2000 up to 2022. So we have made a determination and we worked out the average and that is the data that we have used in the product design and in the calibration of premiums that are pertinent as well as the sum insured that must be paid in the, in the event of the peril um, taking place. So um, just also to explain further that once we have worked out what is the average rainfall in each and every region, we have also gone down to the constituency levels because some of the, these regions are quite big, they are very large. Um, and it could be that, you know, um, one constituency in a particular region, the region might have received good rainfall, average rainfall, but there might be a particular constituency that might have received below, you know, average rainfall. And we will be able to detect, to detect that. 
So the dots, the greens and the red dots that you are seeing in the map is basically GPS coordinates at the constituency levels that is going to provide us with rainfall data so that we are more accurate in terms of making our determination whether there is drought or there is no drought or whether there is flood or excessive rainfall or whether there is not. And this is just to make sure that we manage the risk much better and that uh, the information or the data that we collect is as accurate as possible. Okay, again, using the Hardap uh, region as an example, if you see the two red lines, 17 and 75, 17 and 75. So, anything between those two red lines means that a claim is payable. The moment Hardap receives 74 millimeters and below, then there must be a claim that is payable depending on the severity of the drought. And I will speak to, to, to that. Similarly, if you look at the two uh, green lines, um, that tells you that anything between 240 and 242 and above, that is a clear indication that um, the region would have received excessive rainfall, and uh, excessive rainfalls with will come with um, you know submerging of the grazing um, um, areas, and therefore farmers might have been uh, might be required to transport their animals to higher lands and all of that and therefore a compensation need to take place. Alright, so this is how the actual claim payout is going to take place. So on the left hand side you will see the, uh, the rainfall in, uh, in millimeters and then on the right you will see the percentage payout. So, Hardap region again, in the event that they receive rainfall of 75 millimeter, the payout will be zero. Because why? Because 75 is regarded as normal rainfall in the Hardap region. Um, let's, let's go to, let's say, 69 millimeter. If there is 69 millimeter rainfall received in Hardap region, the farmer who is insured will receive at least 10.34% of the claim. Let's go to the extreme, 17, the number that I've been talking about. 17 is basically the worst case scenario and below 17 even, even more. That is the scenario whereby the policy must pay out 100% of the benefit that is um, um, paid. Right, just to explain a little bit um, further. Now, let's use an example of Van Veik in the Hivion constituency in Hartab region. And uh, Mr. Van Veik has got about 30 heads of cattle. Now, like I explained, that from the 1st of October up to the end of April, we collect rainfall data to determine what is the average net rainfall in a particular region or in a particular constituency. So in this particular case, um, in the Hibion constituency, the average rainfall was 50 millimeter. So how do we go to the calculation? So we will then work out what is the actual millimeter rainfall that was received. You minus that from the um, um, drought um, um, trigger point and you divide that by the, again by the trigger point and you minus the, the drought exit. So when you do that sum, that calculation, it will give you 
that percentage of 43.1. So you take that 43.1%, you multiply it by the sum insured that I was explaining to you earlier, the 3,625, and you multiply that by the number of cattle that were insured. This number can vary. The 3,625 is the only number that is not variable. The percentage and the number of cattle can vary depending on um, what the farmer has insured. So in this particular case, Mr. Van, Van Veek will then receive 46,871 um, 46, as a payout to be able to sustain um, his um, livestock until the next rain season. Um, just to unpack this a little bit more, in the blue color, we are saying that Nasria will be issuing an, an, an insurance contract that is for 12 months. So it's an annual contract. We have divided you know, uh, the season into winter as well as summer. So to manage the risk of farmers waiting until to speculate whether there is going to be good rainfall or bad rainfall, we start to write or to onboard livestock farmers from June up to November. So that by the time the rainfall comes, we have already onboarded the farmers. The chances of a farmer to speculate or to you know, speculate against uh, the insurance is very minimal. At the same time, from October, the red line, from October up to April, on a month-to-month -month basis, we are collecting rainfall data and we are monitoring how the rainfall is behaving. And we will be able already, perhaps by March, to determine if there is a possibility of some claims in a particular uh, region. In May of each year, we'll make an announcement to the farmers in a particular region, in a particular constituency, if there are payouts. Because the good thing about this parametric insurance product is that you do not need to go to Hibion and inspect the fields or the farms to determine whether there is drought or there was excessive rainfall. We get satellite data from the Namibia Meteorological Services and we are able to make decisions based on the data that is provided by the Meteorological Services. Now, the big elephant in the room is, can farmers afford this product? Okay, now, let's use uh, an example of Mr. Dutoy from Oshodonjupa region. Okay, we know that in Oshodonjupa region, the average rainfall 268 to 521. Now, Mr. Dutoit has got 30 heads of cattle. So, if you take that 30 head of cattle, you multiply it by the by the annual premium, you will then be able to work out what the sum insured is. So, for 30 cattle, Mr. Dutoit will have a life will have a cover of 108 750,000. Now, for Mr. Dutoit to get 800 and, I mean 108,750 insured cover, he need to pay 25,620. That's per annum. If you want to work it per month, you just divide this by 12 months, it will give you a determination of what the monthly premium is going to be. But short-term insurance is always paid um, um, annually uh, and in advance. And because we are working on an arrangement with the government whereby the government is supposed to provide subsidy, um, so 80% of this 25,620 need to come from the government and the farmer only need to make a contribution of 5,124 per annum. Again, 
if you divide 5,124 by 12 months, you will be able to work out what is the monthly um, insurance premium that is, um, that is payable. Now, this is really the crux um, of the matter in terms of whether this product will be um, affordable by the farmers uh, or not. And I think from our point of view, with an 80% insurance premium subsidy provided by the government, we are of the strong view that this product will be able to be um, affordable, farmers will be able to participate, and it will be able to provide um, um, you know, um, resilience and uh, climate adaptation in, in that regard. So, just going further into how the subsidy is really going to, um, um, to, to work. I've explained to you earlier on that we are targeting five political regions. In those five political regions, we have worked out that there is about 1.5 million head of cattle. Generally, with new insurance products, uh, in the first year or so, it's the uptake is always about 3 to 5 percent. So we are being conservative and we are saying that in the first year, only 3 percent of the farmers in, are going to participate in those five regions. So that brings us a total number of cattle of 47,000. And we know already from the past experience that, uh, you know, the a premium per kettle that is paid yeah, is 854. So you multiply that by the number of insured um, kettle, it will give you about 40.3 million. That is that is um, that that is the amount of uh, premium that is payable to to Nasri Apehanu. Working on an 80-20 ratio. So it means then that the government need to pay about 32.2 million in premiums and the balance, which is about 8 million, will then be paid by the um, farmers. We have already been collaborating with the farmers, using farmers associations, farmers union, farmers cooperatives, community-based organizations, um, in mobilizing this product. The interest in the market is enormous. The farmers want to participate like yesterday because they believe this product will be able to offer value. And for the very reason that it's aimed at protecting the farmers' wealth and preserving the farmers' wealth. We, it does not wait for the government to declare drought in the country. The moment the rain season is over by end of April, in May, payouts will start so that farmers receive their money and they are able to buy fodder and other you know, supplements for their cattle. Now, Whitley will create an important value chain. And the value chain will really be between the donors, and the donors in this particular case can be government, but it can also be international agencies. So the premium will come from the donors, whoever that might be, and it will be channeled through Nasria. Nasria, I have explained to you that it's 100% owned by the government of the Republic of Namibia. In terms of our risk management approach, we are going to um, pass some of the premiums that are paid to Namibri, which is also 100% owned by the government, and they will provide us with reinsurance coverage. So that in the event that we receive a lot of claims, at least we can also claim back. As we pay out farmers, we are also able to get a compensation from our reinsurance partner. So, in that respect, if there is flood or drought, 
the communities will, will benefit. And that again build you know, resilience. Um, farmers are able to sustain their animals and they can continue to um, maintain the going concern. In the event that there are no floods and there are no and there is no drought, the good thing is that Nasdaq being 100 percent owned by the government, we declare dividends back to the government, and then government will again follow, you know, the same chain in terms of channeling that in a form of subsidy, and that's how the value chain is created. Obviously, we do not declare everything. Part of um, you know um, the profits we can retain to build um, you know reserves and enable us to build our balance sheet and in that respect we will then be able to take on more and more risk with a, a very strong um, balance sheet. To conclude, um, I think there are no doubts that um, Namibia is a very dry country. And we need to do something. We need to adapt. We need to innovate in order for us to be sustainable. Um, climate change risks um, are real, and I think they are evident everywhere. Drought and floods are common. We need to make sure that we protect you know, food security in the country, and therefore subsidy support becomes quite um, important. And the main reason really for subsidy is to ensure that uh, farmers can afford insurance premiums. Because particularly farmers in the rural areas, they do not necessarily have the means of paying these premiums. And that's why the government needs to come to the, f to the fore and provide some form of assistance in order for these farmers to be able to afford the premiums. And I think the more subsidy we provide or we receive, we can then encourage more farmers to participate in this, um, in this scheme and use insurance as a risk management mechanism because majority of our people, particularly in the rural areas, are not able to use insurance as a form of risk management. Um, and you will also see that uh, you know, the uptake of insurance particularly in the rural areas, is very, very low. So we need to increase the insurance penetration ratio in the, um, in, the, in the communal areas so that at least people can start to participate in financial services and in, main, um, um, in mainstream economy. Um, our focus is really to ensure that we protect the wealth of the farmers and we preserve and by doing so we are actually making our economy sustainable thank you very much for listening